breaking news out of the UK. That is where a new government report says Vladimir Putin is looking to install a pro-Russian government in Ukraine as the Kremlin considers whether to invade and possibly occupy that country. A memo from the British Foreign Office says Moscow may be considering a former Ukrainian politician as a candidate to lead the puppet government. Tensions between Russia and Ukraine have been growing for months as Moscow built up a sizable troop presence at the border, leading many to fear an invasion was coming. CNN's Nick Robertson is in Moscow. So, Nick, what more do we know about this? Yeah, this is the British government saying that the Kremlin is currently considering uh, to install a pro-Russian uh, leadership in Ukraine to replace the existing one um, as they are considering whether to invade and then occupy Ukraine. Now, of course, the Russian government says they don't have any plans to invade Ukraine. They keep saying that. They repeat that. But what the British government is saying is they're naming an individual, Yevgeny Murayev. They're saying that he is the person that the Kremlin is looking towards, a pro, former pro-Russian politician looking towards to install as the new leader of Ukraine. Now, CNN has reached out and contacted him, and he said, look, there's no comment to make here because I'm on a, a sanctions list, a Russian sanctions list. So his implication is that, you know, how could I possibly be doing something for the Russian government? How could they possibly want me? Because they already have me un, un, under sanctions. But the British government gone further. They've, they've also named four other people, a former prime minister, two former deputy prime ministers, and a former security official whom they say have been in contact with Russian intelligence operatives. Those operatives, uh, the British government says, are, are, the, are the ones that are currently planning the possible invasion of Ukraine. So this is very strong language, a very specific naming by the British government here. Uh, and the British Foreign Secretary says that this gives an indication of the thinking that's going on inside the Kremlin at the moment, as well as shining a light on the on the difficulty and the desperate situation the British government assesses Ukraine is facing at the moment. Yeah, I spoke to a British security source tonight and asked, you know, why are you putting this out there, all, all this information that you know? And I, I said that the, I was told that the strategy is basically to send the message to Russia and also to the public that, look, we know what you're up to and, um, you know, to get out in the front foot, as this person said, in the meantime, as all this is going on, the U.S. Embassy has sent its first shipment of security assistance to Ukraine, sending some 200,000 pounds of lethal aid, including ammunition for frontline defenders. Is there any concern that could provoke Russia even more, given Lavrov's recent response about an invasion that, that unless the U.S. doesn't go to bed with Ukraine, he doesn't think it'll happen? Yeah, this aid that includes ammunition for the front line coming from the from the United States. Um, there was video footage of this at the airport uh, in Ukraine when it landed and arrived. So there's a big effort on to make a very public show of this. And I think this is absolutely in lockstep with what we're seeing from the British government by naming uh, the, this these group of people and by putting the Kremlin on notice that the British government believes they know what the Kremlin is planning here. It is part of a package of efforts to send a message to President Putin to make him think twice about the potential of invasion. And it's not only that U.S. military aid that's arrived today. We know that the Estonian government sending Javelin missiles, uh, anti-tank missiles. We know that the Latvian and Lithuanian governments are sending surface-to-air missiles, the uh, Stinger missile system that's good against helicopters and low-flying jets. The British government last week announced that they're sending weapon systems. The Czech government has announced that they're going to send ammunition for artillery. Uh, the German government has announced that they're going to send a field hospital to Ukraine, so a military field hospital. So all of these things, it is very public and it's done with that precise effort because they know that this is the moment President Putin is really considering his options and making up his mind. They have to get, as they would say, in his face to get him to, to look at what they're putting up is going to be the problems coming down the road to him if he does that. All right, Nick Robertson in Moscow, thank you so much. And this newest information from the British government compounds the already growing tension between Russia and Ukraine. So where do things go from here and what does this mean for the United States? Joining me now, retired Army Lieutenant General and CNN military analyst Mark Hurtling and CNN political analyst Josh Rogan. 
Uh, great to see you both, gentlemen. General, let's start with you. What is your take on this report from the UK? It, it's a great report, uh, Pamela. What I'll say is Russia uses multiple types of covert and over attacks and maneuver options that they hope will cause divisiveness in any country they're looking to uh, persuade to do or influence to do what they want them to do. None of this is new or unusual. And most countries in Europe, I'd cite Montenegro, Romania, Estonia, Lithuania, and others, have all been affected by Russian malign actions in the past, will tell you that they have had experience in these kind of types of areas. And, and without divulging details, I used to receive intelligence about this kind of uh, thing as the commander of US Army Europe. And your question a minute ago about uh, why are they putting this out there now, it, it's, it's a great question. It's on the mark because intelligence communities used to keep these kinds of things close hold. But now, this kind of information, this publication of information, is critically important to fighting back against what Russia is doing because they will continue to use these types of operations uh, to, to influence. You know, the main issue of an attack that we've all been concerned about uh, is just one of the many things that they can do. There's asymmetric warfare, continued attempts at false flag, covert replacement of Ukrainian officials, air campaign, ground maneuvers. And I think that's what we've got to be concerned about is, as these actions continue between Russia is trying to influence not only Ukraine, but NATO and the rest of the EU as well. Right. I, I'm curious if you're seeing, when you look at, Josh, the annexation of Crimea and how countries responded to that, including the U.S., and how they're responding to what's going on there on the Ukrainian border with Russia, do you see a difference there, like, you know, the U.K. releasing this report tonight, laying out the information they have on, on this puppet government? Yes, Pamela. I, actually, I see the biggest difference on the Russian side, because in 2014, is horrible as that invasion was, they never went to Kiev. They never occupied the capital city, and they never installed a rump government with a fake president, which is what this intelligence report says they're planning to do. Now, of course, it might be one of many plans. It doesn't mean that's exactly what they're going to do. But the fact that they're just, that they have a plan to occupy the country means that their tolerance for pain might be a lot higher than what we're, what the Biden administration has calculated. And I think that's why you see the Ukrainians and a lot of people in Washington, frankly, calling for the Biden administration to do more, calling for more lethal aid. Why is it that we only, this, this was the first ammunition? I mean, we've been in this crisis for how many months? They just started dropping off ammunition. I mean, uh, I think there's a lot of people on the ground who say, listen, we don't know what Putin's gonna do, but the best way to stop the war is by increasing the aid now, increasing the sanctions now, because once he occupies Kiev, even though the whole world will know that this is a, crazy stunt and to snuff out Ukrainian democracy, it will be too late. And if one of the options is to install a rump government and then tell all the world to go pound sand, well, I don't think sanctions are ever going to change that once it's the, once they've done it. So uh, I, I, I think that we have a lot of reason to be very alarmed. So General Hartling, do you think the fact that Russia is putting together this possible puppet government, it, does that tell you an invasion is imminent? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they want to influence Ukraine's action. And I'm not sure uh, that the intelligence that's been passed through the British agency uh, is, is completely linked with a puppet government. Instead, I would suggest that it has to do with replacing officials in a very covert manner uh, so that there is more intelligence coming from inside Ukraine back to the Russian government. You know, it, it would be very difficult to try and uh, completely overthrow Ukraine's central government in Kyiv. Uh, you, you're talking about a president and a parliament and ministries, uh, but they certain, the Russians certainly could try and influence intelligence passing and use part of what they call Moskorova, the, the reduction of intelligence within Ukraine, by in placing individuals in key positions. That's something Russia has done before. I don't think they're considering right now the replacement of the entire Ukrainian government in Kyiv. I want to go to the statement we just got in from the U.S. National Security Council expressing solidarity with Ukraine. It says, quote, this kind of plotting is deeply concerning. The Ukrainian people have the sovereign right to determine their own future. And we stand with our democratically elected partners in Ukraine. Uh, Josh Rogan, quickly, just if you would, 
lay out what is at stake for Americans, for those who might look at this and say, well, that's over there, that's between, you know, Russia and Ukraine. There is a lot at stake, though, for America, right? That's right. What happens in Ukraine does not stay in Ukraine. Not to mention the fact that the, if there's a war in Ukraine and if they occupied Kiev, that would be a bloody conflict in the middle of a pandemic that would reverberate through Europe. Uh, the precedent would have been set that democracies can be snuffed out even in 2022. And that's a, a green light for other autocrats like, let's say, Xi Jinping to uh, believe that America and the, and the West has no stomach to, to fight back against this. And so I think what you would see is a domino effect, and that would have repercussions first in Europe and then around the world. And, you know, we can say, well, that's over there, but it's really too late by the time uh, democracies have been snuffed out because uh, in the end, it's very hard to restore them. And uh, once we let one go, it's not going to be the last.